It's a weird and dangerous world out there, and this is the show that explores all the bizarre and hazardous things people do. So sit back and prepare to laugh and grimace as we take you through the crazy world of the weird and dangerous. Our first story has equal helpings of weird and dangerous. We're in Bengal, where a local resident called in the friendly neighbourhood snake charmer to get rid of a couple of large cobras in the back garden. Sounds simple enough. But when Duda Mia arrived ready to whip some cobra butt, he actually unearthed a slithering stockpile of thousands of snakes. Now that's not going to be good for local property prices. But don't think he was put off by the discovery. Instead of running for the nearest vial of anti-venom, Mia set out to prove to villagers that he truly is a master of the serpent and a complete plonker by eating more than 100 snakes alive. Mia says eating serpents in such quantities sometimes gives him hallucinations, but he always sleeps well after wolfing down a few reptiles. So, if you don't mind thinking you're a 40-foot chicken and falling into a coma for three weeks, maybe you should think of ordering the deep-fried cobra. Cobras are highly venomous and epidemic to Bangladesh, often nesting in houses and making short work of rats and other domestic pets, like cats, dogs and noses. London is our next stop as we relentlessly hunt for the world's weirdest and most dangerous stories. And to be honest, they're not that hard to find. 37-year-old Darren Thatcher could only be described as, well, weird. Darren is sad and lonely and has trouble attracting the attention of the opposite sex. He should be calling a stylist, but instead, weird Darren has decided to spend Valentine's Day inside a three-metre-tall transparent bubble in a bid to woo the woman of his dreams. Good luck. And Darren isn't the only loser to get talked into it. Five other bubble boys are taking part in the publicity stunt, staged by an online dating service. The hopefuls will spend four days in the inflatable balls of love, waiting for Miss Right or Miss Right Now to come along. Let's face it, beggars can't be choosers. An annual race in Chiang Mai, Thailand, which sees racers in homemade wooden carts hurtle 200 metres down a dirt track in less than one minute, can certainly be classified in the weird and dangerous category. About 40 competitors wearing their traditional costumes raced each other in the wild fun of this one-on-one -on -one battle. Yes, who needs knee pads when you've got the safety of a traditional costume? As you can imagine, accidents in this extreme sport are frequent, but injuries are remarkably kept to a minimum. Well, if you can call losing a foot minimal. Competitors are allowed to continue the race even after a major crash, but with concussion and a crushed pelvis, it can certainly be a challenge. Bales of dried straw are strategically placed to stop the racers from veering into the crowd lining the track. Yeah, a bit of dried straw, that'll stop a cart travelling at high speed. Let's get weird and dangerous down under now and head to Melbourne in Australia. And when I say down under, I really mean down, under and completely stuck. Here on a popular bar strip, one young man was innocently retrieving his mobile phone. Nothing dangerous about that, until he got stuck head first in this public rubbish bin. Yes, this 18-year-old, to save him embarrassment, let's call him John, because that's his name, thought it would be a laugh to throw his phone in the bin. But when he went to get it, he got his head and arm caught in the bin opening. 
Finally, John was free and the mobile phone retrieved. No serious damage was done, except that he'd missed two calls. John kept his sense of humour even when told he might lose his arm. Those firemen always know how to keep the mood light. Welcome back to Weird and Dangerous. This time we have a moose on the loose as we stop off in Salt Lake City, Utah in the United States. Alan Zietlin was sitting at his computer sending out emails when an 800 pound moose fell through his window. Well, it's certainly a different way of saying you've got mail. The rogue moose had been spotted earlier by wildlife officers who shot the 18-month-old female animal with a tranquilizer dart. No, they weren't taking any chances. What with all the recent moose maulings? And this was the start of an afternoon that must have been a real pain in the glass for the moose and one of the most complicated moose rescues the officers had ever seen. If it were only one of the most complicated rescues, I'd love to see the others. Ever felt the need to lop off an arm or a leg? Well, if the answer is yes, you're not alone. Body Integrity Identity Disorder, or BIID, is the latest mental illness that has psychiatrists scratching their heads. Sufferers are voluntary amputees. That's right, BIID patients ask doctors to amputate perfectly good arms and legs because, well, they just don't feel right with them. So that's definitely the weird bit, but here's the dangerous part. Some BIID sufferers are so desperate to get rid of their limbs, they even attempt a DIY amputation. One BIID patient told me he had finally found a doctor in Mexico who could perform the operation for him, but it came at a high price. Apparently this doctor charges an arm and a leg. But losing a limb can cure sufferers, and it's a great way to shed excess pounds. And now for something completely different. Well, not really, it's more weird stuff. Serious art or British toilet humour? This is London's lookout toilet, where you can see out, but they can't see in. It's a one-way mirrored glass loo that allows the user to use while having a crystal clear view of the street. But visitors aren't trusting that it's completely private. Plenty of false starts and cases of stage fright. Inventor Monica Bavinci says that the lookout toilet is first and foremost a work of art. It just so happens that inside you'll find a bog standard loo. But with so many people visiting and so many people just too embarrassed to actually use the toilet, they may need to install toilet facilities for the toilet. <laughs> From bowel movements to traffic movements, let's get weird and dangerous in Barcelona, where about 150 dressed up cars have participated in a crazy car race in the Spanish city. Each driver attempted a more ingenious and ridiculous design than the other, as 150 of these self-made automobiles turned up to compete. But a lot of these cars aren't just crazy, they're absolutely certifiable. And if you think the cars are crazy, just take a look at the dipsticks behind the wheel. Let's just be thankful these people don't have the IQ to pass a real driving examination. You could say they're a couple of cylinders short of a motor. Fancy sliding down a 130 metre rope? It's all part of the fire festival here in India. Last one to the bottom's a rotten egg. Our next weird and dangerous story takes us to India, where in a bizarre ritual, devouts in a remote village pierce their bodies with nails to please a local deity. 
know about you, but I prefer the deities that are pleased by offerings of sleeping and feasting. During this Uda Parva festival, the chewers, as they are called, also fast for 21 days before the piercing is done. Ah, oh, well, now it's all making sense. After 21 days without food, I'd be ready to stab myself as well. The devout center a pond near a temple devoted to the goddess Kali to take a bath before their bodies are pierced with iron nails and hooks. Well, at least they're clean. Apparently, the whole family get to nominate the member who should take part in this painful ritual. Hey, don't look at me, I'm just the reporter. Though not much is known about the origin of the festival, locals say it's more than 400 years old and maybe where the idea for Donna Kebabs came from. Let's stay in India now, because the weird and dangerous stories just keep on coming. An environmentalist in southern India called Arnees is trying to achieve what he calls the unique feat, and I call the freakish feat, of incubating cobra snakes. Earlier in the show, we met a man who eats king cobras. Now this guy is breeding them. We need to hook these two up. Yes, that's right. Forget racing pigeons, hamsters or hermit crabs. Our knees decided to give raising cobras a go. So it's little wonder he's not having much luck finding a housemate. I'm not sure if he's aware of this, but king cobras are the most poisonous snakes in the world and aren't really the sort of pet you can train to bring you slippers or sit up and beg. Though if one bites you, I'm sure you could do a great impression of playing dead. It took 70 days before the eggs finally hatched. You've got to hand it to him. 70 days of sitting on a nest of cobra eggs. I just hope he got up quickly when they started to hatch. Why is it on weekends men don't want to go anywhere near the garden shed, but suggest to them that they enter a 12-hour long race that involves skidding through mud on high-powered lawnmowers and they're breaking their necks to get there? This weird and dangerous event takes place each year here in Winchester, England in the UK, but you could be forgiven for thinking it was Motown. In typical Le Mans style, the drivers make a mad dash to their machines, and then man and cutting-edge technology become one, ready for the brain-draining exercise of driving around and around in circles. And though you're watching grown men playing on lawnmowers, the hardcore mowing enthusiasts refer to their specially tuned machines as weapons of grass destruction. Graham Harvey was the winner, skillfully manoeuvring his machine past defender Graham Cresswell and completely whipping his grass. As the event came to an end, I only had one thing to say to the competitors. Hang on, you haven't done the edges yet. Just when you thought too much weird and dangerous was barely enough, we're back with even more. Let's head to Tokyo, Japan this time and meet a couple so weird, they even make Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes look normal. Snakes usually have hamsters for lunch, but when snake Ao-chan and dwarf hamster Gehan-chan met at this Japanese zoo, it was love at first sight and not first bite. Now the four-foot snake and the little grey hamster have shacked up and are living together in this heated glass love nest at the Tokyo Zoo. The hamster's name, Gohan-chan, literally means meal in Japanese, but instead of becoming the snake's afternoon tea, she dazzled the reptile with her personality, and the rest, as they say, is history. Zoo staff are baffled by the friendship, but say it could have something to do with the fact that hamsters aren't very appetizing and do nothing to tempt a snake's taste buds. The snake and the hamster symbolize love between enemies. Maybe there's hope for Paris Hilton and Nicole Ritchie after all. 
Say hello to Antonio Ordonez, a Spanish insectologist from Madrid, Spain, who has set up a shelter for homeless and destitute insects. Antonio keeps company with everything from tarantulas to ladybirds here in his apartment in the middle of the city. The 32-year-old developed his weird passion for insects as a young boy, and his interest is now bordering on the fanatical. At least that's the reason his girlfriend gave him for leaving. Antonio has even found a way of making money out of his strange hobby. He hires out his insects to TV dare shows, reality programs and films. He once even bred flies for a particular program, but says the smell from the feces of 100,000 flies made it a never-to-be-repeated experience. No wonder the other tenants are petitioning to have him evicted from the building. One room in his flat resembles a macabre movie, with hundreds of sinister creatures peering out at you from behind glass screens. The room is warm and humid, a temperature precisely regulated to ensure optimum growth for the various larvae silently growing in Tupperware containers. And something tells me they're the same ones that Antonio takes his lunch in. So, you're single, you've been to the nightclubs, you've tried internet dating, and the arranged marriage your mum set up was a fizzer. So where do you go from here? Some very unkind people would say you're on the express train to Loserville, but not me. I think you need a hug. So get your best pair of pyjamas, let's go to the nearest cuddle party. Yes, in fashionable New York City, cocktail parties are out and cuddle parties are in. People are paying $30 each to touch and embrace others at these intimate gatherings. The rules are clear. Pajamas must stay on at all times and there's to be no kissing. And before any touching begins, participants gather in a circle to hear the rules and voice any worries about other cuddlers. Like, haven't I got a restraining order out against you? Cuddle parties are intended for emotionally sound people. Those in therapy, stalking an ex-partner or under police investigation should consult their health professional or parole officer before signing up. An exotic Patagonia carvey has been reunited with its owner in Washington. The bizarre mix of rabbit, antelope and kangaroo caused quite a commotion when on the prowl. It's glam, it's garish and it's not everyone's cup of tea. It's the Drag Olympics. And no, we're not talking about burly men racing high-speed cars. Here in London, men who love to wear women's clothes are making a sport out of dressing in drag. An hour is spent on preparation alone, with the reapplication of lipstick, false eyelashes and false everything else. All the girls are put through their paces in limbo, high jump, an egg and spoon race and the drag obstacle course. Spectators to the high jump event were warned not to sit in the front row for their own safety. And with this view, you can see why. Of course, all this is done in six inch heels to show true technique and versatility. And drag queens are quite fast on their feet. They're used to racing to the bedroom to get changed before their wives come home and catch them. Rosita from Brazil took home the gold in what she described as a dream, because tomorrow she'll wake up as Brian from Manchester. You've heard the saying, never smile at a crocodile. Well, one 10-year-old boy in Thailand is doing more than smile at a crocodile. He's sharing his bed with one. His friends can keep their pet dogs and cats. Watana Thongjon shares his home with a far more interesting pet, this real-life croc. Watana found his pet in a pond near his home. And let me guess, he just followed you home. So after a lot of, please dad, can we keep him? Ken the Croc has just become another member of the family. 
Watana's father, Prayun, says there is some responsibility to owning a crocodile. He needs to be washed every day and his teeth cleaned before bed. And then there's the job of stopping him from eating the neighbors. Instead of swimming, Ken the Croc prefers a night at home in front of the tally with a pizza and a few beers. Life looks pretty pampered for this scaly guy, with Prayun saying he doesn't care for him just like a crocodile, but as if he was my son. And doesn't that sound completely normal? Yes, it's all fun and games living with a wild crocodile until he eats the remote control. But let's just say that Kang the Croc has his pick of what's on the tally, unless you want to call in Steve Irwin to settle any arguments. You may not think a trip to the local bakery would be worthy of a weird and dangerous story, but it would if the bread you bought looked like a severed head. This is Thailand, and a local baker is making a name for himself for the unusual things coming from his kitchen. Forget vanilla slices and donuts, this baker likes to make bread in the shape of grotesque severed heads, feet, hands, and other body parts. And even though you might think it would turn locals off their daily bread, just the opposite seems to be happening. Curiously, customers are lining up for a loaf, and it seems the more gruesome the better. It's the latest way to impress your dinner guests in Thailand. But just a cautionary word of warning. This is one baker I wouldn't trust if he asked you to come up and see his bread slicer. Well, we told you, some were weird and some were dangerous and some were weird and dangerous. We'll see you next time.